Hello YouTube, Validation Boy here. I recently came across an article that I feel is quite noteworthy. While at first glance it may seem somewhat insignificant, I believe the subject matter it concerns is highly pertinent and deserves some serious attention. I've linked the article in the description. In summary, it's about a young man who entered an erotic massage parlor in Toronto and used a machete to murder a 24-year-old female employee and also ended up attacking the owner of the business. The owner was able to subdue the assailant, but only after suffering major injuries. The most important takeaway from this story is the fact that it's the first time in Canada's history a violent crime of this nature is being blamed on the incel community specifically while being listed as a terrorist attack and a federal offense. In truth, however, there are some major problems with this story. First, there is zero evidence that this attack was motivated by incel ideologies. In fact, the allegations presented in this ridiculous write-up can never be proven because the assailant is a 17-year-old minor. How convenient for the author of this hit piece. The attacker's true motives will never be disclosed, and I believe this is the only way Amber Jameson was able to insert her unsubstantiated narrative within the story. Why did this young man really do this? Did he already know the victim? Were the two romantically involved? She was a single mother of three. Was one of those children his? And why was a minor even inside an erotic massage parlor in the first place? I think it's safe to assume that the answers to these questions would more than likely destroy the narrative this female author is trying to concoct. There are shadowy forces entrenched within the media industrial complex who are trying way too hard to conflate incels with violence and misogyny. But here's the thing. Not all incels are inherently misogynistic. Not all incels are inherently violent. And furthermore, not every violent misogynistic murderer is an incel. These three things are completely independent of one another. So, there is obviously a huge false agenda at play here. Let's take a closer look. The concept of the incel, or the involuntary celibate, has evolved into one of the most bigoted, contrived, and dangerous concepts of all time. Ironically, the first person to ever declare themselves an incel was a female. However, the term has now been weaponized to exclusively represent sexually frustrated heterosexual males. And sadly, because of this shift, the use of this term now spawns from a place of hatred, arrogance, and self-importance. In most of the instances in which it is strategically employed, the incel archetype is nothing more than thinly veiled female supremacism. While I myself have used the term incel to shame people in the past, I'm now able to see the error of my ways. In actuality, those who use the term as a pejorative against men are just as bigoted as any modern day Klansman, neo-Nazi, or member of the new Black Panthers. Let me explain. As we all know, racial supremacism is widely frowned upon, but not all supremacism is based on skin color. Female supremacism is a very, very real thing, too. In fact, there's a word for it. Misandry. Society loves to pretend that misandry doesn't exist, but I, for one, have personally experienced it on many occasions. Two entirely different groups of misandrous female supremacists here on YouTube, for example, have utilized this systemically endorsed form of bigotry to get my content deleted in the past. Content I spent hours, even days, writing, recording, editing, and producing. But in the eyes of the beast system, these acts of cancellation were justified by the notion that the people whose ideas I was critiquing are a so-called protected group. And because they are a protected group, they can do no wrong. What a conundrum. See, if it was really equality that this group was after, they wouldn't even want to hide behind the protection of Big Brother. Their ideas would stand strong on their own. The fact that they do hide and proactively team up with third-party authorities to cancel culture anyone from hearing the voice of their opposition merely proves that they perceive themselves as superior and not at all as equals. This makes them supremacists, bigots, hate mongers, and potentially even inadvertent future provocateurs of real-world violence. As far as I'm concerned, such actions technically fall under the umbrella of terrorism. Female supremacists are indeed cultural terrorists, no different than any white, black, Hispanic, or Asian supremacist. And because all major internet platforms have adopted their shamefully biased, hate-based attitude of female over-entitlement, the group's opposition has little chance of ever clarifying the parameters of any discussion concerning their bigotry. 
Now, there are self-declared incel forums on the internet, but honestly, how authentic are they? It can easily be argued that such fora might be manufactured by the female supremacists themselves in order to create a false narrative. The narrative that a woman's GPV is the most precious and sacred thing in this world, and that every heterosexual man should be spending all of their time and energy trying to gain access to one. For all intents and purposes, female supremacists want society to bow down to them simply for possessing the GPV. Young men who subscribe to the angry ideologies found in the incel community are simply duped into believing this narrative, regardless of how archaic, outdated, and laughable it may be. Yes, these so-called incels may very well be sexually frustrated, but this is only a natural result of their raging hormones. Inevitably, the day will come to pass when their frustrations naturally subside. Most of these young men will eventually find a partner, and for those who cannot, there will always be women who are more than happy to sell them sex in one form or another. Sex is, after all, nothing more than a transaction. In a female's youth, she will typically trade her commodities for little more than the attention or validation of the person she's infatuated with. But as she ages and her commodities begin to decrease in market value, she will typically begin to trade them for things of greater tangible benefit. Things like resources, security, and stability. This is of course why marriage even exists in the first place, and it is also the reason sugar daddy websites are currently thriving. As we all know, women are the gatekeepers of sex and reproduction, while men are the gatekeepers of relationships and security. Now, women have historically been quite content trading their sex and fertility for these highly valuable masculine commodities. And this is only natural. It's called traditionalism. And most of us would not even be here today if not for its long legacy of success. But in recent years, many people have begun to argue that marriage has become nothing more than long-term prostitution, and the Johns are the ones getting screwed in the deal. I don't necessarily agree or disagree with this position, but it is very difficult to argue against once we consider the skyrocketing divorce rates and the statistically proven favoritism that females who ditch their husbands are known to enjoy within the legal system. You see, a man will usually be more than happy to provide for a woman long term if that woman has a reputation of behaving in a more conservative and traditional way. And that's because a conservative woman is obviously the safer choice for a man to invest his time, resources, and energy in. Female supremacists, however, expect men to remain in such traditional roles while demanding that they, the self-declared superior ones, be rewarded for deviating from theirs. It is the embodiment of hypocrisy and entitlement. What this reporter is attempting to do is deify her gender. She wants the reader to believe that men are so pathetic, weak, and thirsty for the GPV that if they can't gain access to one, they will go on a killing spree. Sorry, bigots, but your body parts might not be as coveted as you want everyone to believe that they are. The fact that this author sunk so low as to exploit the circumstances of a case wherein a minor is involved just so she can safely push her outlandish agenda speaks volumes. Of course, this is in no way an endorsement of the attacker's crime, but if female supremacists like this are going to be rewarded a platform on which to spew their hate-filled propaganda without any proof, then real equality is officially a thing of the past. As always, much respect, and thanks for watching.